Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Greg Fritz has been changing lives through the good news of the gospel for over 35 years. This good news will inspire, inform, and change you so you can live daily in all the promises of God. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, this is Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program today. We are teaching a series called What You Hear Can Change Your Life Forever. Our teaching is taken from Mark chapter 4, and we've been on this for several days now, and I've enjoyed just digging into the Word of God on this subject. And Jesus is talking about the sower, the word, the seed, the ground, and he uses several parables to relate this principle to us today. Today, now that we're not living in an agricultural society, some of these things are a little further removed from us, but everyone still understands the principle of planting a seed and getting a harvest. And so we put together this series. It's called What You Hear Can Change Your Life Forever. It's a four message series. You can get it in CD form. We'll mail it to you for $24. You can order it on our website or we're giving it away to our viewers. If you go to the website, go to the product page and do the download, it'll be a $16 purchase. But at checkout, enter the coupon code DFJ958 and you can have it for free. I would love for you to get this series and listen to it over and over. I created it uh, just for this teaching. Uh, it has been an exciting uh, really trip into this, uh, these lessons on seed time and harvest. I just love how Jesus' stories relate to us today. He's very, very relatable. He taught in terms and illustrations that people could understand, and we can still understand them today. Even though you and I know we get our green beans from the grocery store, but we do know that that's not where they come from originally. In order to have uh, a harvest, a produce, somebody somewhere has to plant a seed. Things just don't happen. They don't, they're not created by man. Somebody had to plant a seed in order to get that harvest. So Jesus is taking this principle, this natural principle, and he's saying, look, the kingdom of God works the same way. You plant seeds, you get a harvest. We talked about the, in this parable that we're in, it's the sower sowing the word into the ground. The sower, there are three components, the sower, the seed, and the ground. And we talked about how the seed is incorruptible. God's word is the seed and God's word always works. Anytime the word is planted, it will do its part. The sower is the least important part of the process because really anybody can relate God's word, uh, transmit God's word, plant God's word, share God's word. Anybody's able to, uh, of doing that. We also talked about how important it is to have preachers that are professionally involved in preaching the word, teaching the word, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But today we're talking about the ground. Jesus gave four types of ground, which represents four different kinds of people. And in the four types of ground that he gave 2,000 years ago, he gave these examples, and they are so true today. And people have not changed in all these years. So the, the parable of the sower starts, it's Jesus' re, reiteration of the parable of the sower, Mark chapter 4, verse 14. He says, the sower sows the word. That's all he says about the sower and the word or the preacher and the, and the word or the seed. The rest of the parable has to do with the ground. He's making this point that the seed always works. It's really determined, the, the production, the harvest is determined by the ground, what the ground does with the seed. So the first type of ground, which we covered um, uh, already, would be the seed that's sown by the wayside. And Satan comes immediately and takes away the word. That would be people that really aren't concerned about, they're not interested in the things of God, and they get in the presence of a preacher or a message or a service. They hear the word, and they just don't. They're just not the least bit concerned about it. It means nothing to them. Satan comes immediately and steals the word. 
But then in verse 16, it talks about the second kind of ground. And it says, these are likewise the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. They have no root in themselves. And that's important. They have no root in themselves. And they only endure for a time. And afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately um, they stumble. So in the second group of people, they hear the word and they act like they love it. They accept it. They receive it. They're all excited about it. And then they really don't do anything with it. It's like people that are just going with the latest, greatest fad or the latest, greatest, uh, you know, thing that's happening in the world. They get all excited about something, but they really don't have any dedication. Or you could say that they're an inch, inch deep and a mile wide. They don't have any depth. It said they don't have any root in themselves. They don't really have much discipline or commitment to anything. Because for the word to work, you've got to commit to it. You, you've got to determine, I'm going to, I'm going to embrace this and I'm going to hold on to this and I'm going to put value on this and it's going to work in my life. And, and if you don't, it just, it, it's, you've got to be in it for the long haul it, because it doesn't happen instantly in most cases. The word develops, it grows, it changes you from the inside out. So you have to be aware of that. And people that don't have any root in themselves, sure, if it could happen instantly, they'd take it. If you could just change their life with the wave of your hand, they, they would accept that. But if it takes much, uh, you know, ongoing care or concern, they're just not interested in that. That's a real problem. I don't know if you've seen people like this. I sure have. Um, you know, you get into the church or into the things of God and maybe they <clears throat> in charismatic churches especially you know you lift your hands or we sing or we shout and you know they these people they seem to shout louder than everybody else and they lift their hands higher than anyone else and they shout and they run faster than anyone else and they're more vocal than everyone else <clears throat> and then six months down the road you can't find them they're gone because they didn't have any root in themselves. They didn't have that long-term commitment that it takes. You know, I'd rather somebody take their time and <clears throat> analyze God's Word and analyze the plan and purpose of God and truly make an informed decision and commit to it for life than somebody get all excited about it and, and then, you know, tomorrow you can't even find them because they're excited about something else or they're distracted by something else. We see these kinds of people in the church. We see them in the kingdom. And Jesus identified them 2,000 years ago. Here's how he said it. They have no root in themselves and they endure only for a time. I don't know about you, but when I fully embraced Jesus and when I got filled with the Holy Spirit and I really began to pursue God, it was a lifetime commitment. I knew I wasn't going anywhere else. I found what I was looking for and I wasn't going to waste my time trying anything else or looking any other place. I knew that God was the love of my life. And, and it takes a decision, an informed, deep decision to follow God and commit to His Word. You have to have that kind of commitment also to His Word. And if you'll do that, the Word will work for you. And if you, you know, people have this idea, well, I'm just going to go down there for healing and maybe something will happen. Maybe I'll get healed. Really, what you need is a word, a promise that you can hold on to and stand on that promises you that thing you need, that you can grasp it like a seed, plant it, guard it, water it, fertilize it, give it chan a chance to produce in your life. But this, this type of uh, response to the word doesn't produce a harvest. They have no root in themselves. They endure only for a time. And afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. So these people... They, they just aren't willing to fight the good fight of faith because your, your faith will be tested or tried or challenged by the enemy, by circumstances, by trials, by symptoms. Once you decide, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept God's word, there's a fight. You know, there's a fight to planting a seed in a garden and seeing it 
produce at the end of the, of the year, or at the end of the, se- the growing season. There's a fight involved, and Jesus is trying to make this clear. You can't just do this half-heartedly. You can't just plant a seed today, forget about it, and expect it to produce a harvest. There's a certain amount of commitment that is involved on our part so that the Word will produce, but it will always produce as long as we do what's necessary. So these people are shallow. Uh, they, they're a step beyond what the first group, the first p- group of people were, were unconcerned. The, the, the word got planted in their heart, but they really didn't want it to be. They were drugged. They, they, somebody drug them to church or somebody forced them to listen to a message or watch a program on TV. And they, they were forced into it and they didn't want it. And it had no effect. The second group, they got excited about it, but it was very shallow excitement. There was no commitment, no depth to the word. And it wasn't able to grow like if you were to. Let's just say you threw seeds out in the backyard. You didn't really prepare the ground. You just threw them out to see what would happen. Well, some of them may sprout and they may do a little bit, but but as far as bringing forth harvest, it's just not going to come that way. It takes more commitment than that to have a garden that produces. You can't just, you, you, you know, he's saying here, we've got the components together. We got the preacher and we got the word and the ground, but it still broke down and it broke down when it came to the ground itself. The, there was a little more a, a attachment, a little more appreciation, but not enough to bring forth the harvest. So shallow people, shallow commitment, you can see that um, from time to time in the church and maybe in people you know. But it definitely describes a group of people in the world today. Then the third kind of ground, the third category, is in verse 18. It says, now these are the ones sown among thorns. They're the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Now, this is the area that we need to be concerned about, that we need to be aware of. In this group, and I think more people fit into this category possibly than any other, because these people actually received the word. They actually had put value on the word. They got it growing in their life. It began to produce in their life. They were way on down the road toward harvest, but things came in and choked the word. This is the group that actually has the chance to produce, see the word work in their life. And when I say that, I I don't want to be vague about it. We're talking about receiving the blessings of God or manifesting God's blessings in your life. We're talking about real world experiences with God, such as salvation. That's the obvious one. Healing in your body. That's a promise from God, a blessing that's been purchased, paid for by the Lord Jesus and has been made available to us, his people, through his word. Then there's the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, miracles of all kinds. There's prosperity. There's a life of victory and overcoming. God protecting you from all harm and all fear and all, you know, care and concern. These things can all be real in your life. You can live an overcoming, abundant life, healed, healthy, whole, full of joy. But it's the result of you receiving the word and fertilizing it, watering it, allowing it to grow in your life. It's so easy to let other things come in and choke out the word. So this group of people would be uh, church people who who started out good. Maybe they had years and years of wonderful, a wonderful life with God. And then things just went bad and they haven't figured it out. Maybe they think that, you know, they call themselves backslidden or or maybe God has turned his back on me. Or maybe I've committed some sin that separated me from God forever, you know. A lot of things would be solved if we just understood this parable that you could be on 
your course with God and doing your, uh, you know, your best with God and things could be clicking on all cylinders and then things can get dry and hard and distracted and weak and then all these problems, can, those are weeds. Those are thorns and thistles coming in and they will come in if you don't stop them. So every person in the kingdom is susceptible to being this third kind of ground. Every person in the kingdom has dealt with this as much as any gardener has had to pull weeds out of their garden. As much as any gardener has had to hoe around their plants and keep out, you know, other things from growing grass and thorns and weeds from coming in and taking over their garden. This is a very real part of gardening that every gardener deals with. So you could say it this way. Any garden, no matter how long it's been there, or how well it's been taken care of, can grow up in weeds if the gardener would just take his eye off it for a matter of days or weeks. It, any, any person of God can get distracted. And notice this. It didn't say they went out and sinned and sinned against God and, and got into immorality. Notice what he says here. This is what all of us need to be watchful for as gardeners. And we're taking this, this um, parable seriously because Jesus said this. If you don't understand this parable, how can you understand any of the parables? This one is important because the kingdom operates operates this way. So here's what we should be watchful of. It said, the cares of this world. These are the weeds that come in and choke out the word. They could take a perfectly healthy garden that's producing really good crops and choke them out by the cares of this world. That didn't say the sins of this world, the cares, just concern, just responsibilities, just things that you have to do. Taking the kids to school and taking the kids to sports or doing your job, providing for your family, going to school and making sure you do your homework and working an odd job, a part-time job, paying the bills. All of these things are cares of this world and they're all important. You have to fulfill your obligations and your responsibilities, but always leave a place for the Word of God. It would be like a gardener saying, I don't have time to keep weeds out of my garden. Well, if you don't, then your garden is going to grow up with weeds. You say, yeah, but I'm busy. I have other things. I, I understand. Everybody does. But when you plant a garden, you're going to have to factor in the amount of time it's going to take to keep the cares, the weeds, the thorns, the grass from taking over your garden. The same is true in the kingdom. It takes a certain amount of maintenance, less natural things, and the natural world, the natural needs and responsibilities of life completely choke out the word. This is what happens to people who say, you know, I'm very busy. I don't have time to read my Bible. I don't have time to go to church. I don't have, God knows I love him. God knows my heart. I'm a busy person. I just don't have, you need to take some time. You know, nobody would ever say that about eating. I never heard, seen anybody in modern, the modern world starve to death because they said, you know what? I just don't have time to eat. I'm so busy. I've got so many things going on in my life. I've got to do this and that, and I can't eat. Well, you're going to die. Well, I'll just have to die because I just don't have time to eat. No, you will find time to eat. And if you're committed to gardening, you'll find time to pull the weeds. You don't have to spend all day, every day, every minute of the day pulling weeds out of the garden, but it does take some time. It takes some attention. And that's what it takes to be good ground. You don't have to go to a monastery and become a monk and give up your job and leave your family so you can grow the Word of God in your life. But you do need to take a little bit of time to make sure that the cares of this life are not more important and dominating in your life than the Word of God. Get up a little bit earlier and get into the Word. Put the Word of God on your devices. I know you have devices. My mom is old-fashioned, and she's got a smartphone. If she can have one, you can have one. Surely you've got some devices in your, in your home and in your car and in your hand. You've got a radio stereo in your car. Find out how to get the Word of God on your radio, on your stereo. Find out how to 
put earphones in or earplugs and listen to the Word of God on your phone or your iPod. Find out how to put it on your tablet or your computer. Get the Word of God in your life. Get up and read the Bible. Make time to go to church. Say, well, I just, I'm so busy. I'm talking about gardening. Listen, there, there's just no shortcut. Now, I know the world has moved forward from an agricultural society, and we don't grow our own food. We take a shortcut. I'm glad. I'm thankful. I love to go to the grocery store and get salad items that are already there, that are cut up and ready to get. Or I like to get fresh green beans, canned green beans, frozen green beans, corn. I love it. Tomatoes. You can get all these things at the grocery store and you can take a huge shortcut. We don't have to grow them in the backyard. We don't have to plant them in the spring and wait till fall and get a harvest. We don't have to do that in our society for food. But can I just tell you, there's no shortcut in the kingdom of God. He still does it the same old-fashioned way. There is no warehouse that you can go and get your healing and go get your prosperity and go get your deliverance that's already prepackaged. Say, well, I went to church one time and went forward and I got instantly delivered. And that does happen. But if you want to keep your blessings, if you want to keep your inheritance, if you want to hold fast, the Bible says hold fast to that which you have received. You're going to have to do some gardening. You got to keep the cares of this life, the weeds and the thorns of this world from overtaking your mind, your heart and being filled and consumed by the things of this world. A gardener does not have to quit their job to have a garden, but they do need to spend some time out there making sure that things are healthy. And that's really all he's saying. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches. And that's, you know, we're not going to preach a whole sermon on that, and I'm not going to get meddle in your affairs, but I'm just going to say this. Sometimes the money's not worth the effort. Can I just say it that way? It's deceitful. You think all I got to do is get a third job, and I can get all this, everything I want. And if you have to give up your, your gardening, your, your word garden, if you have to give up the, the word of God being dominant in your life to earn a few extra dollars that you can survive without, it may be a good idea to hold off because you don't want anything to take the place or crowd out the word of God in your life. Now, I'm not saying you can't be busy and work two jobs and all that. It, we, we, there are a lot of things that we can do with our time, but make sure you're giving the time that is necessary to your spiritual well-being. That's all we're saying is you can eat, you know, you can walk and chew gum at the same time, but just make sure you don't forget about the word because you'll get down the road. Your garden will be grown up in weeds. You won't have any anything of God working in your life and you'll wonder, where did I go wrong? Well, it could have been right here. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Just beware of that. That may be where you're struggling right now. Is you've just got weeds in your garden. Can I just tell you there's no condemnation? Just back up and weed it. Just, just, just go back to the basics. Get back in your Bible. Get back in the presence of God. Spend more time with Him. Begin to eliminate things in your life that are just distractions, that are just taking up your time and your attention. Quit worrying about things that you can't change and get back to the basics. I'll tell you, your garden will be back in good shape in no time. Nobody has too many weeds in their garden that, 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 to get it back in shape. Everybody can stay fruitful in God's kingdom if they just spend a little time and a little attention. God's not asking for 24-7. He's just asking for you to work with Him. He understands where you are, what you're dealing with, and He's there to help you. Isn't that good? And then you can move into this fourth type of ground, this fourth type of person. It says, these are the ones, this is verse 20, sown on good ground. Those who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. That's us. That's you and me. We hear the word. We love the word. We hold on to the word. We quote the word. Get the Bible on, on you know, write the scriptures on, on paper or cards. Put it in your phone on your reminders. Stick it on your mirror. Quote the word of God. Give attention to God's word. 
Stand on some promises that particularly deal with needs that you have and allow those to speak louder to you than the world around you, than the symptoms or the circumstances. Just spend time in God's Word and let it grow. We're going to get on to some other teaching about this where we see that, you know, when you plant the Word and do what's necessary on your part, the Word comes in and grows and prevails and moves and changes and dominates. You're not in this by yourself. Don't forget the power that's in that seed to grow and produce and change from the inside out. So once you get the ground clear and keep it clean and keep the weeds out, watch the miracle of harvest happen in your life. Isn't that a great thought? Listen, this is not beyond anybody. That's why Jesus made it so simple and used such a simple uh, a natural example as sowing a seed and seeing a harvest. These are basic principles, but they'll work for anybody that'll work them. You are good ground. You give attention to the Word of God, and the Word of God is producing in your life 30, 60, and 100 fold. I truly believe that. Amen. Well, I hope you got something out of this. We're going to move on into another section of this teaching in our next episode, so don't miss it. You're going to want to hear every teaching. Until then, may God's best be yours. By listening to God's Word, you will start to see His blessings manifest in your life. Order your copy of this audio series on our website, gregfritz.org. I just want to take a minute and let you know that we're continuing to grow and reach out in every available medium, and it takes money. We could use your help. If you'd like to partner with our ministry, as many others have done, we could use another 150 partners. We're believing God for 300 partners this year. And I would ask you to pray about becoming one. If you are not able to do that, we totally understand. If you'd like to send a one-time gift, we would be happy to receive it. And get on our mailing list. We'll send you our newsletter and we'll send you a remittance envelope. If you'd like to send a check in the mail, you could do that as well. But get on our mailing list and let me send you out a, a letter or newsletter every couple of months and stay in contact with you that way. We would love to hear from you soon. God bless you today. May God's best be yours. Greg Fritz Ministries is reaching new people daily with the Word of God online and at conferences. I have never heard of Greg Fritz. I actually never heard of Greg, Greg Fritz before this conference, but he's really funny and I love listening to him. That's what happens in services like this. Oh, you can't see it, but in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit will make sure that we do. We'll be talking about this and talking about that and seeds are going out all over the congregation. And you may have come and said, I need you to do something for me, God. I've got to have my miracle. Well, listen, because it's those who hear that receive. It's those who hear. The Bible says, be careful how you listen. For to those who hear, more will be given. Isn't that an ingenious plan? If you have been encouraged by Greg Fritz Ministries, please partner with us to reach more people with the good news of Jesus. People think if I'm going to change my life, I'm going to have to work. I'm going to have to know somebody. I'm going to have to make money. I'm going to have to succeed. I'm going to have to accomplish something. But the truth is that you can hear the Word of God and be changed forever.